Today I'm going to show you how you can start rapidly building applications on scaffold.io. First we're going to deploy a production GraphQL API, then we're going to add social authentication with Auth0, and finally we're going to jumpstart a real-time React app in the spirit of Slack's messaging client. The best part, it's only going to take a few minutes. Let's get started. First I'm going to log in with my GitHub account. After I've logged in, we're going to be taken to the apps page where I don't have any apps, so let's create one. We're going to call our app Slacker. As our app's creating, Scaffold's automatically spinning up all the infrastructure necessary to make it run. Once it's done, you're taken to the schema designer. This is the backbone of every Scaffold application. It's where you define your GraphQL schema, which in turn comes to define your API. By default, we give you a couple things. First, the user type. Users in Scaffold are automatically able to handle authentication. Using integrations, you're able to add social auth to them as well. Another interesting thing is the node interface. So the node interface implements a single field called ID. It's special though. Every type that implements node will be backed by a table in our relational data store. That means that all types that implement node are both directly queryable as well as can be used in connections. The blob interface is also special. Every type that implements blob is backed by Amazon S3, and if you're on a paid tier, a CloudFront CDN. You can mix and match these interfaces to add functionality to types. For example, look at the file type. The file type implements both node and blob. That means that files are both directly queryable, can be used in connections to other node types, and can store files on S3. So we're building Slack. In order to build Slack, we need a few new types. First, we're going to add a channel type. A channel can both hold messages and have members. And it implements node and timestamp. Let's create that. We're also going to add a message type. Messages are content. Messages have an owner that we'll call an author and contain content. They also belong to a channel. They also implement node and timestamp. Now let's add some fields to our channel. A channel has, namely, a name. It's going to be a string. It's going to be both non-null and unique. So that you have to have a name, and you can't have the same name for two channels. A channel is also going to have a Boolean flag that says if it's public or not. It's going to be a Boolean. And then let's go ahead and add content to our messages. So a message has content, it's a string, you have to have content. And then let's also add a nickname to our user. So if you ever get lost in your types, you can type it in in this fuzzy search. So let's add a nickname to our user. It's also going to be a string. Last thing we're going to do is wire up some connections. So a channel has many messages. So it's a one-to-many connection between channels and messages. So a channel has messages. Let's name the field messages. It's going to be of type connection. The of type is going to be message. And the reverse name is the name of a field that's going to be automatically injected into the message type that points back to our channel. So let's call it channel. And you can see it down here. So one channel has many messages. Let's create that. Let's also create the relation for our members. So a channel can have members. It's of type connection to user. And then the reverse is if, if a channel has members, then users have channels. And this is going to be a many-to-many -many connection. So when you have a many-to-many -many connection, you actually get to name the connection. And that's useful for a reason that I'll show you in a second. So let's call it channel members and click create. So many-to-many -many connections are cool because they have this through type. And the through type allows you to actually add fields to the connection itself. This allows you to add metadata to the connected objects. We don't need that now, though. Just good to know. And then the last thing we're going to do is a message can have an author. So let's go ahead and add the author connection. So a message has an author. It's also a connection to type user. In the reverse, if, if a message has an author, then a user has messages. And it's many messages to one author. Let's go ahead and click create. 
Cool. So that goes ahead and finishes up our schema. So what we can see now is if we go to graphical, we've got our very own GraphQL API deployed in production. You can see we have methods to query it. You can get file, get role, get message. Even through the viewer, you can access large sets of objects, and you can give complicated where args to really filter down on what you're looking for. You can order, and then you can also get, you get pagination by default. You also get mutations to manipulate them. You get login and CRUD and other abilities to uh, manipulate your, your data. And you also get subscriptions. So subscriptions allow you to subscribe to real-time feeds of your data. This is how we're going to subscribe to our chat rooms. So before we get ahead of ourselves, let's go ahead and add social auth. So to add social auth, you go to the integrations tab. There's a bunch of integrations you can choose from. You can automatically add payments with Stripe or email with Mailgun, push notifications. But we're going to add Auth0. So Auth0 asks us for some stuff. So we don't have this yet. So let's go create an account on Auth0. So I'm going to go to Auth0. I'm going to log in with my, G with my GitHub. Once I've logged in, we're going to go ahead and create an account. So let's call it Slacker App and go ahead the account's been created so then we don't want google we're going to use github login so turn that off go to save click connections go to social from social click github and then you'll see okay so now auth0 needs some stuff so to do that let's go to github so we're going to go to GitHub, we're going to go to the apps page, we're going to go to Auth0 applications, and we're going to register a new app. We're going to call it the Slacker app. We'll give a URL. We're going to give a little description. And we're going to have to give this authorization callback URL. So this URL, if you go back to Auth0, and you go to clients, default app, and you grab your domain, then the callback is HTTPS, that domain, slash login, slash callback. And let's register that application. So now we have a client ID and a secret. Let's go back to Auth0 and go back to connections, to social, to GitHub. Let's turn it on. We're going to give our client ID. We're going to give our client secret. And we're also going to need email access. So let's check that. And then let's click Save. So once we save, we can go back out. Let's turn it on. Click Continue. And now we can actually try it out. So let's give it a try. So let's authorize application. And you got my user information. Great. So now we have social auth figured out. So let's go add it to our scaffold app. So go back to Clients, Default App, and then grab the domain. Let's enter the domain. Then grab the client ID, enter that, and then add the client secret and add that. So you have a choice of it's base64 encoded or not. These are not old tokens used to be. They no longer are by default. So let's leave that empty and then click, well, create. Great. Now we can see our Auth0 integration is on. And what did that do? So if we go back to graphical, you go to docs, click mutation. What you'll see is we now have these two new mutations called login user with Auth0 social and login user with Auth0 lock. So log, login user with Auth0 social allows you to programmatically connect to it. And then Auth0 lock is a tool that Auth0 produces that is basically a client side tool that abstracts away some of the complexity. So our app's going to use lock. So let's go ahead and start working on our app. So here's, our, here's the starter kit for our application. There's a, there's a tutorial here that you can follow along to see how we built this. Uh, but essentially, we're just going to start from this, this state, and it's already configured with the schema that we just created. So let's go ahead and clone it. So git clone. Let's go into Slacker 2. And then we're going to install our dependencies. And that's going to take a few minutes, so we'll let that run. In the meantime, we can take a look at the code. So the code's fairly simple. 
There's a source directory. This is set up to run with Webpack. In the source directory, we have a few utilities that help us connect to our application, uh, whether it's setting up subscriptions or, or logging in. And then there's components. So there's app.jsx, which is the entry point. It has a left panel that is for channels, and then the right panel is controlled by the by React router. Channels is a pane that shows uh, you know, in, in the Slack app, it's the left side where it shows all the channels. And then messages is the main pane that is our, you know, the generic chat room. So you can dig through this. It's not super complicated. Um, but for now, we're just going to be able to run it. So let's go take a look at this. Let's see if it's done. So it's finishing up here. Perfect. Okay, so now it's finished installing dependencies. So now we can, the last thing we need to do is connect it to our new API. So if you go back to scaffold, if you click on my API and you copy that address, and then we open back up our application, in the root there is this config file. And if we just overwrite this with our, with our own URL, and then we drop the HTTPS, so that'll get added automatically for us. And then we also need to give it our client secret our client ID. So we'll give it our client ID. And then we also need to give it our auth0 auth domain. So let's give it that. And this is to configure, this is configuring auth0 lock. Great. So now that we've replaced those, let's go ahead, ahead and run it. So run npm start. Webpack's going to do its thing. And then the last thing we need to do before opening it is this URL. If you go back to auth0, down here, you need to set up the callback URLs, and since we're running it locally, we'll just enter this address, and then click Save. Now go back, and we'll see that it's almost done. Here we go. Perfect. Okay, now let's open up that URL. Great. Okay, so I'm already logged in, I'll log out. So now, here's our Slacker app. There's no channels, there's no messages, there's a login button, so let's log in. I'll click login, I'll throw a lock pops up, I'll log in with my GitHub. And as soon as I log in, I can go back to auth0 and then see, there I am. Now let's go back to Slacker. Let's go ahead and create a channel. So let's call it hashtag general. Let's set it to be public and click create. Now you can see we've got a general, oh, looks like we got a little Uh -oh. Let's see what's going on here. Hmm. Okay, so we're seeing our first error. So we see cannot query field picture on type user. So I forgot to add the picture field to our user model. So let's go ahead and add that. So go back. Add a picture, add a string, click create. That'll go. And then let's go ahead and refresh the page. Click general. Great. Okay, so now we have our application running. So now what we can do is type things. Well, that's cool, but not that cool. So is it really real time? Let's test it. So this is GraphQL subscriptions in the making. What you can see is if we add it up side by side and I open up general, hello world, and you can see that they'll appear on both sides. Awesome. And there you go. So that's how you can start to quickly build real-time applications with GraphQL. Um, I hope this video helped. Uh, I hope you guys enjoy it. And you can go ahead and take this starter kit, make it your own, and add your own functionality and start building awesome real-time apps.
I look forward to hearing from you. Uh, join our Slack. Uh, email me at michaelscaffold.io, and I look forward to hearing from you more. All right. Bye, guys.